Stephen, um, you were very um, pointed in your criticism of the, the players on Wednesday night. Pointed? What does that mean? You were to the point. Okay. You were quite blunt. Have you reflected on it and do you still feel that way as after sort of 24, 24, 40 hours? Um, I, I think my way of um, looking back at what I said is I always try and be honest. Uh, I don't want to get in a situation where um, people don't believe me or it's not authentic. So at the time, how I felt, um, I felt like we'd really let ourselves down. Um, and I took responsibility for the group's performance on the night. Um, so I have no regrets in terms of what I've said. Um, we've played ourselves into this position, not just on that night, you know, since we've come back. Um, and I also have to speak to uh, a fan base that's worldwide, and I think they'd want me to be honest uh, and pointed, as you said, and, and uh, authentic in, in the way I speak. Um, so I don't want to sit here and, and change my ways. Have you had feedback from the players? Because there might be some footballers out there who are here, manager, and like that, who bristle at that kind of criticism. Yeah, um, well, look, my door's always open. If, if someone's not happy, we can discuss that and we can analyse the situation at the time. I mean, my door's always been open since day one. Um, these players have had an incredible amount of praise and protection uh, from me since day one. That'll continue. Um, but if I see things that I don't feel is right in terms of where we're at at that moment, Good, bad, or indifferent, I'll always speak the truth. Are some of the results in the last few weeks, do you reassess the quality you have in the squad? Uh, no, I still believe we've got incredible quality. Um, the first six months of the season proved that. Um, we've had a couple of real sore results since we've returned. Um, and from a league perspective, at the moment, that's damaged us. Um, but I still believe we've got real good players in the squad um, and that's been proved not just on the on-off occasion over uh, a consistent period of six months. Um, does that mean we st stop re-evaluating the way the squad's at and trying to improve the squad going forward? Not at all. Um, I think I remember getting asked questions uh, in Dubai before the ball was kicked after the winter break and the, the, the answer to the question was always still the same. If someone becomes available in the market that we feel can improve us or improve the squad moving forward. Our club back Rangers, you're always trying to look at that. So that hasn't changed on the back of a, a, a poor result. You said after the team that you didn't get to see a real warning sign that that's coming. When you, you look back at that performance maybe, maybe once before, can you see areas that you can, you can tweak? Well, I think um, it's actually individual mistakes that have maybe cost us in, in, in the games that have been so. Um, don't think the actual performance the other night from start to finish was bad. We created some real good chances. Um, we had control of the game for probably definitely 45 minutes, but still had some real good moments in the second half. Um, but we lost momentum uh, when the heat of the game changed, when the dynamics of the game changed. We lost momentum. And when we lost that control and momentum, we made two, uh, well, certainly one bad individual error. Um, and we obviously didn't defend the first goal well enough either. So uh, that's the learning from the, the last game that we've debriefed and gone over with the players is um, we need to be better uh, at getting control of games, certainly when we're ahead, because that's now Hearts and Kilmarnock where we've started the game well in terms of taking the lead and, and, we, and we've lost that lead. When you look at where you are in the title, that 10-point do you sense the information from the players that you can turn that around and that Well, I'd like to think I know them well enough as, as, as people. Um, I know they'll have very similar feelings to myself. Um, and, you know, under my watch, no one will be giving anything up, conceding anything. We will continue to fight. We've played ourselves into a fantastic position in, in, in the first half of the season. Uh, but over the last three, four weeks, we've played ourselves into some complications and some issues, but I've got belief that I've got the right people with me to to try and improve that and, and do our best to, to get back involved in it. Do you have to win every game now? <laughs> Good question. Uh, I can't predict the future, so I don't know what is going to happen. 
Um, all I can do is try and prepare the boys and try and plan to win every game. Um, but we've got some tough games left, but there's a lot of football to be played as well. In terms of your criticism of the players, you, you said earlier on, is, is that a case that there's, there's, there's no point in being nice about it? First of all, am I allowed to criticise my players? Am I allowed to? It's not my job. What's the problem? I'm just saying that if, if, you, if you talk about the niceties and you know, the niceties, what would you have thought to me? If I'd have said after that game, there's no problems here, we're all fine. Then it's fine. Well, serious, what would you have thought to me? Yeah, it would have been strange. strange Next question. I think a lot of footballers now, though, sometimes bridle criticism. I guess that was one of my original questions. There's a lot of. Well, it, well, well, look, we're, we're, in, we're in a place and we're representing a club that we need proper players and proper people that are prepared to win um, and accept and take responsibility and accountability. Um, that's what I want to do as a manager. Constructive criticism coming my way now is totally fine. Hi. Deserve it. Uh, how do you feel about what you've heard after the game? Do you appreciate that direct honesty? Yeah, of course. I think um, there's always times where we, we're going to need it as players. Um, a club like Rangers, um, you're playing every week and it's you've got to be able to take criticism. You've got to be able to take the good with the bad and um, obviously the result was disappointing. And as a group of players, we need to take responsibility and um, show a reaction come tomorrow. I suppose sometimes it's hard to take when you, you hear that, but as you say, the players want to be safe onto that pitch. Really yeah, of course it is. I think... Um, the coaching staff and the manager can't do everything for us when we when we go on the pitch and we step over the line. So um, I think on the other night when we do take the lead and we are under a wee bit of pressure or um, come on, I could get on top of us a wee bit. I think it's down to us as players is to take responsibility on the pitch and um, and kind of lead it from from within. And um, the other night, unfortunately, we never done that and we take the criticism. Steve, would you accept that um, prior to the break? Certainly in the final third, Rangers attacking wise were quite free flowing. Since the break, they're less so. Do you accept that? And if so, why do you think that is? Um, I can understand your question. Um, I think games are obviously different. You'd have different periods and, and different episodes. You'd have different confidence levels and, and belief within the squad. Uh, sometimes you can be wobbled by a result that can have an effect either way. Um, we were in fantastic place before um, the break, but it wasn't just because we were executing in the final third. Uh, it was more every person was at it. We, we had a real good structured organisation about ourselves, and we were managing games very well to, to get us the right results that we're finding consistency. Um, maybe, you know, suspensions and, and injuries in, in, in the final third have played a part. Um, maybe teams are working that extra bit harder to nullify us and, and, and challenge us in, the, in that area, setting up different. Um, it feels as if since we've come back after the block, teams are being even more men behind the ball and, and less trying to beat us. Yeah, Analysing our games um, so far, there was a period of three, four games where we'd had one shot on our goal. Um, so, it's a, it's a real good, interesting question. That's up for debate, but it certainly looks that way on the evidence of the results that we need to be more ruthless in, in, in the final third, and um, our forward players might need to, um, you know, c come even more for us. So, from a coaching point of view, does that mean when you're thinking, how do I address this? Do you make tweaks or do you make drastic changes? Well, I think you've seen that, what we've tried to do. Um, we have tried to tweak the system slightly. We've tried to change personnel. We've um, we've added someone into the squad on the back of a, an injury. Um, I believe the injury come to Jermaine because of a suspension to Alfredo because we were left um, having to play Jermaine in four games, which he hasn't done for such a long time. Um, so... You know, things have changed within the squad. Um, some bits of bad luck, some bits of maybe uh, us maybe having another forward at our disposal, possibly. Um, but we're analysing it all and trying to find the answers to get us back to where we were. Can I just clarify something you said to BT Sport in your post-match interview on the issue of 
potential recruitment in January, you said you could have done one or two. Was that one or two more, or the one or two you brought in? Yeah, the one or two I brought in, yeah. Two you brought in, okay. Um, and do you think you've left yourself a bit short up top? I mean, Alfredo seems, doesn't seem to be in the same place. Well, I, I think we're fine now, but if we didn't manage to get Canberra in, we would have been really stretched in that area because of Jermaine's injury and the length of time. Once it was confirmed on the scan, it was going to be four to six weeks. Um, I think a player at that age, uh, you're probably looking in the middle or to the back end of that four to six weeks. So it was important that we got Canberra in. Um, and also we, we also knew that our forward um, was in a situation off the field as well. So it wasn't an ideal situation. How much do you think the suspension the situation and stuff has had an effect on Alfredo? Do I think it's had an effect on it? Quite possibly, yes. How do you try and address that? Give him the support he needs, like I always do, like I always have. Give him the protection that he needs. Um, forwards have these situations um, in front of goals. Sometimes it's nothing to do with off the, fit, off the field. Sometimes it can just happen naturally. Um, but the signs of late is that he's getting... Back to it, you know, he scores a Hamilton, he scores a perfect goal against Killy that was ruled out. He had another fantastic chance that he normally buries, so the signs are good that he's going to get back to where we all need him, because when he does, he's a fantastic player. What about the Well, I think the fans deserve that. Um, that's one thing I said to the players after the game, our fans never pick and choose. They never pick and choose, they're there. Wind, rain, hail, snow, uh, Austria, Russia, uh, Dubai, wherever we go, they're there. They don't, they don't pick and choose. Um, I think some of them um, have days where they don't get behind us and support us and they don't like us, which is fine. That's a normal fan for you. Uh, but without a doubt, we all need to get our fans back happy. I think they deserve that. Stephen, you said that teams since the winter break have appeared to even have more men behind the ball. Do you expect Linton to, to set up like that on Saturday? Um, Quite possibly, yes, but I still think they'll carry a threat. Um, they've got a forward in form, uh, Lyndon Dykes, who's having a real good season, um, who is capable of playing uh, in the air or on the floor, who's quite dangerous. They've also got some other talented players around that, so I'm sure they'll be organised and well-drilled. I'm sure Gary will have them uh, like that, and they'll try and frustrate and try and get our crowd uh, more anxious and more nervous. I'm sure that'll be their game plan, but uh, for us, I'm looking for the reaction that uh, our fans deserve and I'm looking for a real positive showing from us. How are you on injury? Uh, as we were. As we were. Ryan, you came back, <coughs> excuse me, you obviously came back midweek. How did you feel the tempo of the team was? Um, I think we started the game quite bright and um, we'd done everything that was asked of us. We, we'd spoke before the game and says, let's try and get ourselves in front, let's try and control the game. Um, and I think for large parts of the first half we were doing that and it felt comfortable on the pitch and then um, we come out second half and we, we don't start properly which gives Kilmarnock's fans a lift, give their players a lift and then they kind of put us on the back foot. Is that something you think, Stephen, maybe the team can improve and just get that opponents from the get-go? Well, it's something we mention all the time. Um, you know, the, the game was scrappy in the second half and I think it suited them more than us. We had control. Uh, the first half. You look at the stats of this game compared to when we beat Hibs 3-0, they weren't much different. It's just that the momentum, uh, I think Kilmarnock pushed us into a place in the second half that we didn't accept and it made us uncomfortable. We were turning the ball over too much and then our errors crept into the game because we'd lost control that we had in the first half. Um, having said that, um, when that happens to us, we need to learn that if we can't win a game, at least take something away from the game, minimum. Minimum. Um, obviously, the second goal is very difficult as a manager to defend uh, in any level of football. Um, but we will learn. I'm confident we'll learn because we've got good people who want to learn. You know, the players realise the, the situation we all do and we all take responsibility for um, you know, our form at the moment, which is a bit indifferent. And just finally for me, Stephen, what would you say to, to the supporters who have bought in and absolutely you've done since the last 18 months, but they're at a stage in the season where they think, well, the league might be a goner? Well, look, I, I, I totally understand the feelings where they're at right now. Uh, of course, they are. It's the reason why I'm always really open and honest and um, as real as I can be. Um, 
But football changes extremely quickly. Um, and I believe that us as a group, players and staff, can make them happy um, in the short, medium or long term. Sorry, Ryan, finally, how desperate are you as a group of players to win on Saturday and get momentum back? Yeah, of course. I think we always say after a disappointing result, we, we want to show reaction and um, we, we all kind of say the right things and what everyone wants to hear. But I think come tomorrow, it's there's no time to be to be saying this or that. It's We've got to go and, and put in a real good performance and, um, and, and show how much it means to us and show how much um, Wednesday night hurt us. Ryan, you know, players always speak about great for Rangers that come to that, but... To be honest, I think we always just try and focus on what's happening here and what's happening in this building every day. Um, day to day, it's the manager and the staff pushing us in training, or um, we've got to we've got to start driving our own standards every day. And um, so I don't really think you get time to really worry about anywhere else, but. Um, as I said before, there's no doubt that we're disappointed about Wednesday, but we'll stick together as a group of players. And um, as I said before, come tomorrow, it's important that we we're ready to go.